with the eastern kingdoms reduced to nothing more than smoke and ruins, hope now lies in Kalimdor, just as Medivh foresaw. So get comfy and come. Take a seat by the flames of war. Thrall's journey west had been long and arduous. The ships that bore them here were broken and battered from the maelstrom's waves. But it had proven fruitful already. They had found new allies and friends in the Darkspear trolls that now accompanied them. But his forces were now scattered and as the ship broke land all across the coast, he would search for them. He would have to be swift in reuniting the clans. Who knew what dangers and perils lay in this unfamiliar land? And he was right to be wary. The first danger was quick to present itself. A race of half-humanoid, half-beasts known as centaurs would attack anything on sight but they were particularly savage in their treatment of another race that Thrall encountered, the Tauren. After one of the battles with the Centaur, Thrall was greeted quite unexpectedly by Cairn Bloodhoof, a chieftain of his people. Seeing the ferocity and skill of the Horde firsthand, he would offer Thrall a deal. You see, Cairn was on a journey with his people, a journey to Mulgore, to escape the centaur that had hunted their land's baron. If Thrall could protect their caravans, he would tell him of the location of an oracle. The pact was agreed between the two. Thrall wished to uncover the destiny for him and his people, and so they set out on the slow trek to Mulgore. The Kodos were slow and cumbersome, as they hauled the necessary possessions of the Tauren people. During the fighting, Thrall and Cairn would become close. At journey's end, Cairn was true to his word and told Thrall of the Stone Talon Mountains that lay to the north, that it was there that he would find this oracle and discover the truth. They departed as friends and allies. The Tauren would not soon forget the kindness this horde had shown their people. The long trek began to the peaks, despite the horde not being fully united. All of his searching he could not find Hellscream or the Walsong clan, but he could delay no longer. It was then that they came to the boundary to the Stone Talon Peaks. Here they discovered this is where the Walsong had been all along but they were embroiled in a clash with a settlement of humans led here by Jaina Proudmoor. Jaina had taken what remained of her people as promised and brought them to the safety of Kalimdor's shores. But once she saw the orcs, she believed she was followed and upon being attacked, she responded in kind without hesitation. She had been drawn to these mountains also, sensing a great power that lay within. She would use this power to safeguard her people, she thought. Jaina's people were not only humans from Lordaeron, but many different races and kingdoms. Jaina represented something for those who followed her, something that was lost now in what remained of the Eastern Kingdoms. Hope. A lot to bear for one person, but she remained strong. Thrall initially attempted to sneak around the human encampment. Perhaps he could employ goblin airships to reach the summit unseen. But it was the impatience of Hellscream and the Warsong that gave them away. They attacked the humans and forced Thrall to engage also. He attempted to reprimand them after the fact, but they merely scoffed and said that a real warrior would have charged in. Thrall sent Grom and the Warsong clan to Ashenvale to collect wood for a future settlement. He could no longer trust them to control their buzzlust. Thrall once again met Cairn, who would have come to the mountain to seek the oracle himself. Once more they could work together, and they eventually reached the summit. After much searching, deep within the heart of the mountain, they found the chamber of the oracle. But he was not alone. 
Jaina and her own forces had arrived here just at the same time. This would be a dangerous standoff, and neither side willing to give an inch. It was then, however, that the Oracle revealed himself. He was Medivh, the Guardian, and he had brought them here for the greatest of purposes. Meanwhile, in Ashenvale, the Warsong clan had not kept quiet. Rom had pushed deep into the forest, brutally murdering the night elves that attempted to defend it. It was then that the demigod Cenarius came to investigate. The mark in their blood was unmistakable. It was that of the Burning Legion. They had returned, he thought. He and a small force of elves and treants assaulted Grom and his warband. They were devastatingly overpowered by Cenarius. All hope appeared to be lost as they gave ground inch by inch amidst the twilight forest. However, the trolls in his company had sensed a font of dark power nearby. Perhaps they could use it. Thrall had taught them of this tainted power and warned them never to succumb to its temptation. But they ignored the warnings and drank deep of its foulness. All at once their connection to the Legion was re-established. Rage and supernatural strength consumed them. They lost all good sense and reason. They swarmed the demigod all at once. Despite Cenarius being a being of notable power, he was still overwhelmed by their sheer ferocity. He was felled, a shockwave that was sensed by all those close to nature and caused them to go into mourning. But it was done, and the price for victory was high. Sensing the connection, Manoros, the Pit Lord Commander, came to enslave these orcs once more. The Oracle told Thrall and Jaina what had happened to Grom in the forests, and what lay ahead. That the battle would decide the fate for this world and all those upon it. They would face corrupted orcs and demons and even the dead. Their only hope was to rely on each other something that humans and orcs reluctantly agreed to. The Sentinels had brought news of the death of Cenarius and the demon-filled orcs back to Taronda of the Night Elves, who had felt a dark shadow growing in her mind for some time. She knew something was coming, a terrible storm. She gathered a small contingent of her elves and would investigate herself. Her beloved forests were being consumed by fell corruption, and she aided those she could to escape before it consumed them too, including a desperate group of Firbolg. Then they spotted it, a human settlement led by a righteous knight in radiant armour, until they were swarmed by a relentless horde of the dead. She could offer no aid, not with the small force she had, not without joining them in their fate. So she watched quietly amidst the shaded trees. She watched for some time, until at last their leader was revealed. It was none other than Archimonde himself, an old and ancient enemy. She managed to escape into the shadows once more using her gifts from the goddess Ilun. There was no time to waste, the demons would pursue her relentlessly, as they knew her as much as she knew them. It was time to awaken the slumbering protectors of Azeroth. The druids must be awoken. Leaving Chandra's Feathermoon in charge of the defense of Ashenvale, she would make her way to the heart of the Moonglade to retrieve an ancient artifact known as the Horn of Cenarius. With this, she awoke her beloved, Malfurion, first and chief of the druids. She had changed in this long time apart. She still loved him, but she longed for him to be with her, rather than his duties. But she was not the only one who had changed. The long sleep had rejuvenated him in the dream, 
and magnified the immense power of the druid. Archimonde had come for the tree, to claim the power of the Well of Eternity. They must journey to the barrow dens of the slumbering druids. They would need all of their might to combat an assault of this magnitude. Once more, it seems, the elves must face this threat. The last time the Burning Legion arrived, it almost cost them everything. One by one, each of the barrows were awakened, Talon and Claw among many others. Eventually, Tyrande would come across the prison of Illidan Stormrage. She would set him free, against the strong wishes of the others. You see, she knew he had some part to play in all of this, and in defiance, she released him. Illidan was more than ready to fight, but not for the glory of the Night Elves. He rushed to meet the coming demons in the now-named Felwood. Reports came rushing in to the other elves that Illidan had engaged the dreadlord Tychondrius, and Malfurion gathered his forces and rushed to his brother's aid, only to find Illidan alone the sole victor. He had managed this feat by taking on the power of the demons themselves. He had transformed himself beyond elf, beyond mortal, into something resembling the demons themselves. He was lost to them now. None objected when Malfurion banished his brother from the forests of twilight. Banished for all of time to come. Jaina and Thrall's forces were barely hanging on by a thread. They had only managed to survive this long by relying on each other. It was then that they were sent one final vision. They would meet on a hill with Malfurion and Tyrande, but were immediately dismissed by Tyrande, who still had Cenarius's death fresh in her mind. But Medivh would appear one last time. He told them of the Eredar Lord's true plans, and their only path to victory for Azeroth. They would have to, for now, put aside all their grievances and work together, for the true battle was about to consume them all. But that's the next episode. Sorry about the small hiatus everyone, no need to worry, everything is back on track. Thank you again for all the support, from every like and subscribe to even every comment. It really does mean a lot, and don't forget to come back. Anytime.